Hey guys, welcome to NBDE Pass. Um, videos to help you guys passing your um, NBDE exam easily. Um, I try in my videos to make it um, concentrated to um, so you guys can have fun learning and it will help you passing your test. Um, this is um, the first video for Perio and it will be this video and the second one will be introduction uh, about periodontics. Okay, we're going to start now. Uh, please, guys, uh, spend some time watching this video and the second one because that will help us for the future videos, guys. We need to have uh, the basics um, confirmed um, so it will be much easier. Okay, we're going to start right away. Predontium. Um, the predontium is uh, the supporting um, tissue of the tooth and it is um, the gingiva and the attachment apparatus. The gingiva, um, the main function of the gingiva is the protection and the attachment apparatus is the uh, periodontal ligament here those ligaments that tie the tooth to the alveolar bone this is the alveolar bone and the cementum is the layer that covers the root okay guys quick note here attachment apparatus is a terminology that traditionally was used to describe the gingival fibers and the junctional epithelium uh, not being used anymore for that it's now the periodontal ligament, the cementum, and the alveolar bone, okay? We're going to get to the gingival fibers and the junctional epithelium in a couple of minutes. Okay, next slide, guys. Okay, so um, the gingiva. Um, we could divide the gingiva into um, the free gingiva and the attached gingiva. The attached gingiva is the part of the gum that's attached to the bone, the free gingiva is the non-attached one. Okay, the free gingiva surrounds the tooth and it forms the wall of the sulcus. It starts coronally from the beginning of the gum here all the way to the junctional epithelium. Uh, let me draw it here, guys. Uh, this is a tooth, an anterior tooth, a lower one. Okay, here. Wow, this root is too small. Anyway, and here this is the marginal gingiva and it goes here to attach at this point this is the junctional epithelium or the um, epithelial attachment or the base of the pocket so the free gingiva here is the gum or the gingiva starting from right here okay Coronally, the beginning of the gum coronally all the way to the junction epithelium. This is called the uh, free gingiva. All right, and separated from the attached gingiva by the free gingival groove. This line, guys, here that's called the free gingival groove, and this is the attached gingiva. Okay. All right, the free gingiva is formed of the marginal gingiva and the intergingival and the interdental gingiva the marginal gingiva here the one that i showed a couple of seconds ago the interdental gingiva is the interdental papilla and the gingival col the interdental papilla is this triangle here i'm coloring right here this triangle okay between the teeth and the col is um i've never heard that terminology in dental school by the way i just saw it in the decks um, here guys if this is a tooth and if we're looking from a proximal um, side the concave um, gum here between the two teeth or adjacent to that tooth here is called the dental col okay remember um, the marginal gingiva is paracratinized while the interdental gingiva which is the papilla and the col is non-keratinized all right okay so um the don't forget the interdental papilla is usually the first part to overgrow or to have the hyperplasia or to get swollen okay next is the attached gingiva the attached the attached gingiva is the gingiva that binds to the alveolar bone this one here the one that i'm coloring okay this is called the attached gingiva, attached to the periosteum of the bone, and it's separated from the um, 
alveolar mucosa. Uh, the um, I think the the slide looks very dirty. Let me just uh, erase some of these. Okay, so um, again, the attached gingiva is separated from the um, alveolar mucosa. Okay, by the mucogingival line. The mucogingival line is this line, guys. Here, okay, separates the attached gingiva right here from the alveolar mucosa. Okay, so this is the attached gingiva. Okay, don't forget, guys, the mucogingival line is easier to be seen with anterior teeth than with posterior teeth. Okay, all right, the attached gingiva could be measured from the base of the pocket or the junctional epithelial or the epithelial attachment right here outside there all the way to the mucogingival line so it's from here all the way to the mucogingival line this is the attached gingiva okay so um the attached gingiva is always gratinized gingiva okay all right let's go to the next slide Okay, gingival epithelium. Uh, the gingival epithelium could be also um, categorized as outer epithelium, sulcular epithelium, and junctional epithelium. Um, the outer epithelium here um, starts from here, the crest of the gingiva, right here, and extends all the way to the, could you guess, mucogingival line or mucogingival junction. This is the outer epithelium, okay? So, um, the outer epithelium is keratinized, okay? Except this top part that has the um, marginal gingiva, it will be paracreatinized. Um, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter thickness. Uh, sulcular epithelium, the sulcular epithelium here starts coronally Okay, the inner side of the sulcus here, all the way here. This is the sulcular epithelium, and it stops at the junctional epithelium. The junctional epithelium is the one that attaches to the cementum. Okay, so the sulcular epithelium is thin, non keratinized It has no red apex. Um, again, starts coronally, ends at the junctional epithelium. Junctional epithelium is this uh, color band non keratinized 0.25 to 1.35 millimeter is usually 10 to 29 cells <laughs> layers and it decreases epically to be um, 1 to 2 cells um, this is 1 to 2 not 1.2 and the number of the layers of the cells increases by age and it has the retapex as well um, not as well it's the only one that has retapex the retapex is the extension of the um, epithelial cells inside the connective tissue. Okay, so the retapex is only in the um, junctional epithelium. Okay, we'll go to the next one. All right, so um, the gingival fluid, or also called uh, the sulcular or the crevicular fluid. Uh, it contains epithelium, connective tissue components, inflammatory cells, serum, and plasma protein. The plasma protein helps to uh, increase the adhesion of the junctional epithelium. It has the flora, and the sulcular fluid passes through the spaces between the junctional epithelium cells. Uh, remember, the space between those epithelial cells increases when there's an inflammation. That's why during inflammation, the amount of the um, sulcular fluid or the crevicular fluid increases. The function of the crevicular fluid is cleansing, antimicrobial, and adhesion, the adhesion of the junctional epithelium. Okay, gingival fibers. <clears throat> gingival fibers, mainly type 1 collagen, and it also, um, the um, same for periodontal ligaments, it's mainly type 1 collagen. The function is to hold the marginal gingiva tight to the tooth, increases the rigidity of the tooth and hold the teeth together. 
Um, there is principal group and there is secondary groups. Um, for the exam, um, the principal groups is the one that you need to know. Uh, first, um, we have three groups, the dentogengival, it should be one word, dentogengival, which is facial, lingual, and interproximal. It is extend, those fibers extend from the gum to the cementum at the base of the pocket, like right underneath the junctional epithelium. The circular, which encircle the tooth from the marginal gingiva and the inter, interdental gingiva. The transeptal is cementum to cementum, from a tooth to another. And sometimes the transeptal fibers is also um, categorized under the per periodontal fibers. Um, it's not supposed to be considered one of them, but anyway, uh, you could see it in the choices for both gingival and periodontal fibers. Um, tractional force, guys, is um, generated by the extracellular matrix of, uh, of the fibroblast, and it increases the tensile strength of the collagen, okay? Uh, so it helps binding the teeth. Okay, gingival tissue composition. Um, the gingiva contains 60% uh, collagen. Um, type 1, which is the um, forms the lamina, lamina propria. Um, remember, guys, um, the periodontal ligament is also formed of type 1 collagen, and the bone as well is type 1 collagen. But the type 1 collagen that forms the gingiva is different than the one that forms the bone. 5% fibroblast, 35% matrix and vessels. Remember, um, type 4 collagen forms the basement membrane. Remember um, the word four and floor. Floor is the basement, so type 4 is the basement membrane, 4 and floor. Um, don't forget also the rule of vitamin C. Um, with the health of the gum, um, vitamin C is important for the hydroxylation of proline and lysine to form collagen. Um, shortage of vitamin C causes scurvy. Scurvy is the spongy, bleedy gum disease. Um, because the capillaries have very fragile walls, so they bleed easily. Uh, okay, next. Okay, um, this is the last slide, guys, and it's very important. Um, those measurements, please remember them. There's at least one question in the board exam um, about those measurements. Okay, here, um, the first one is gingival recession. Uh, how do we me measure the amount of the gingival recession? It's the distance between, or here, the distance between the CEJ, the cementonormal junction, to the gingival margin, okay? This is the gingival recession. Uh, second is the pocket depth. The pocket depth is the dis distance between the gingival margin to the junctional epithelium, okay? So this is called the pocket depth. Um, the attachment loss or the level of the attachment loss is basically adding the gingival recession to the pocket depth. Let me explain this, guys, um, and, or how it works. Here, uh, if we look at this picture here, we have only one line that doesn't change, almost doesn't change, which is this one. Which is this line? Yes, mucogingival junction. This one doesn't change. What changes is the gingival margin and the base of the pocket or the junctional epithelium level. These two change. If any of them goes down, it eats out the amount of the attachment or the uh, attachment gingival or attached gingival. So if you lose two millimeter from the marginal gingival or the gingival margin, I'm sorry, and two millimeter from the sulcus, you go down, that means you lost two and two millimeter of the attached gingiva. Why? Because the mucogingival line is here. It doesn't, it didn't change. So to always to find out the amount of the attachment loss, the amount that you lost from this here, you will see how much you had gingival recession, how much this went down and how deep the pocket is 
that means you lost all these amounts. Okay, this is a very common question, guys, in the um, in the board exam. Um, I'll give you an example of a question here. Um, let's say um, someone has a gingival recession of two millimeter, and the pocket depth is four millimeter. So what is the attachment loss here? The gingival recession (CEJ) to the gingival margin is two millimeter and the pocket depth here is four millimeter so the attachment loss is two plus four six okay guys that's a common question please uh, don't forget to subscribe um, thumbs up and if you have any question guys leave a comment uh, i'll be uh, very happy to answer you all right guys um see you in the next video